Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on the navigation bar. We're going to have a look at all of the different items that, that we have here on the left hand side in the sidebar in the navigation bar and try to explain them and see what they're there for. The first one on the list is the Project Explorer, and this is the hub of your design control items. So if I expand it, I will find uh, entry to the overview. This is where you can see the documentation structure and of course each individual type of design item that you have in your project. And this is going to be according to your configuration and your QMS, of course. The next one on the list is the File Explorer. This is where you find all your files and documents uh, and reports and things like that. And also the, the entry point to when you want to edit things in Word, of course. Then we have the Trace Explorer. And the Trace Explorer is a dynamic view uh, looking like a tree where you can see the current traceability situation in the system. There are also in the action menu a couple of uh, functions using that you can use to change the traceability, of course, setting traces to and from, clearing suspect, and things like that. And the last of the explorers is the test run explorer. And here is the location where you manage or execute uh, all of your test cases. So you can gather them in a test run. Uh, and assign it to the test run and then you can start assigning the test cases to people in your team and start collecting the result by executing them. And since uh, the testing is a big portion of the medical device development, you will probably have a lot of things going on in here. It usually makes up around 50% of the complete documentation. So the next uh, entry that we have in, in the navigation bar is the product status. And if I expand it, we can see that we have four entries in consistencies, consistency coverage, risk summary, and DHF index. And they are all very suitable tools for your quality control. And if we look into inconsistencies, we can ask the system for all the inconsistencies for use and need and get a nice list. Bit too long for my taste, but you can see everything that's currently not up to par with whatever the QMS is requesting of the documentation. So we have open issues, traces missing and things like that. And consistency coverage is similar, but the other way around. So here we can see what's been completed and we can also see what's currently missing. And the missing portions are once again, the inconsistencies that we saw from the previous many item. And then we have the risk summary and you will see one entry here per risk analysis method that you have in your system. In this configuration, we only have one and that's the hazard analysis and you get a nice overview and you can select if you want to have after or before mitigations and see what happens when you toggle this button. And then we have the complete DHF index and you have the possibility of selecting different options on how to display that. I'm going to go for latest released and you get the complete list of deliverables and where they are in the system, what the current status is and who signed off and things like that. So that's the product status with all its sub items. Then we have something that we call your assigned items. And this is a very handy place to see what's actually going on and what your assignments are in the system. So if you would have any assigned items, they would be listed here. If you specifically have any assigned reviews, they would be listed in the next button and assigned signature in a similar way. Currently, I have none in this particular configuration. Then when we go to the data crunching part of it, we have queries, charts and trace tables. And queries is, as it kind of sounds like, it, the possibility of creating a query to the data in the system. And we have a nice little uh, designer to help you do that. And we also have a bunch of predefined filters that you can make use of. And when you define one, you can run it and you get the current result. Of course, all of these outputs can also be included in any Word document. So you can actually put a the result of a query in a Word document, if you want to. 
Similar for charts, uh, here we get a more graphical representation. We have uh, a chart where we break down on the field applicable to in user needs and see what that looks like. We get a nice little pie chart. If we click on these items here, we can see that there are four user needs where, which are applicable to patients and eight applicable to operators. And this is, of course, following your specific configuration. So the data may look differently in your system. And then last but not least in the data crunching section, we have trace tables. And in the Trace Explorer, previously, we would look at the current traceability situation with everything that's currently traced in the system. But with trace tables, we can actually specifically ask for relationships that are of extra interest. And here we have an example of a trace table between use need, designing product requirements, verification test cases, and verification test results. And once again, it's possible to create these in a nice little designer in the tool. And when we run it, we can see the result of it. And these contents can also be included in any Word report, or you can do any ad hoc reporting as well directly from, from this view. Then it's down to the project history. Everything that we're doing in the project get logged, of course, and we maintain an automatic audit trail. And this is where it's possible to be inspected. And you can also work with the filter to look at different periods or different ranges of periods and different types of events as well in the system. So it's easy to find who did what when. And then when we go to snapshots, snapshots is um, a capture of parts of the documentation items or the full project at a certain time. And you can display a snapshot. Uh, snapshots are read only, but you can also compare snapshots with each other or with the current state of the project. And you can, of course, set snapshots. And that's also possible in different menus um, spread out throughout the software as well. And then last but not least, we have the settings. You may or may not see this portion of this menu item uh, depending on your user rights. But if you have the rights to do user management or product management, then this would appear as well. And you can do uh, management of users, assigning users to projects, uh, looking at what their user groups are and maintain the rights, change project settings, link projects and things like that and also lock unlock objects in the project and then of course change project this is where you go to load a different project you end up at the load project dialog or not unimportantly the help button if you have anything so if you click on the user manual you will end up at an online user manual and also in the context where you're currently working in the project. So the last thing we had open here was product history. And this is also where you end up in the help section, of course, with the manual. Thanks a lot for your attention and looking forward to meet you in the next tutorial.